we're going to look at agile estimation. Now, what's the problem with estimation? The problem is people. We're actually really bad as human beings at making estimates. Specifically, we're very bad at making absolute estimates. So if we think a job's going to take six weeks or eight weeks or three months, by the time we finish the job, we'll probably find that our estimate was completely inaccurate. However, we're really good at making relative estimates. So if we think one job is going to take twice as long as something we've done before, chances are that will turn out to be pretty accurate. So how can we use that? How can we use the fact that we're really quite good at relative estimates to improve the estimates that we make during a project? In Agile Estimation, we use a thing called story points. Now, a story point is just an abstract unit of time. For a particular team or a particular person, a story point might be half an hour or an hour or a day or maybe even a week. We don't know. The idea with a story point is to take us away from thinking in terms of absolute time estimates and to start doing our estimation relatively. Okay, so see how this happens. Let's imagine that we've got a, a stack of story cards. And what we do is we, we find one of the story cards that we think is going to be one of the quickest to do. And then we'll find a second card that's going to be one of the, the slowest cards, one that will take the longest time for us to complete. And then we'll apply story point scores to them. So if we take the, the shortest story, we'll give it a low value like, say, 2. And if we think proportionate to the, to the very short story, the very long story would take us 30 times longer, we might want to give it a story point score of 60. Now, I'm not actually going to give this a, a score of 60. I'm going to give it a score of 55, and you'll see why in a moment. But now we've got these two ends of the scale defined with a very short story and the very long story. We then take all of the other stories from the backlog and we position them proportionately on that scale so that all of our estimates, all of our time estimates are made relative to each other. Now, once we've got all of our stories scored with story points, uh, I should probably say something about why I chose the number 55 for an estimate and not 60. It's because 55 is called a Fibonacci number. Now, the Fibonacci numbers, uh, it's a sequence of numbers, and each number in the sequence is the sum of the two before it. So we begin with the values 1 and 1. The next one in the sequence is 1 plus 1, or 2. Then we get 1 plus 2, which is 3, 2 plus 3, which is 5, and so on. And an interesting feature of the Fibonacci sequence is that as you go through the sequence, each number tends to be about 60% larger than the one that came before it. And it turns out that if we use Fibonacci numbers for our estimates, we tend to be more accurate. They seem to fit the way that human beings think. So when we do our estimates, we tend to use the Fibonacci sequence. So we can apply the Fibonacci numbers like 13 and 21 and 34 for each of our story point estimates. So we've estimated in story points, but there's also another thing that we can estimate in. We can use value points. Now, story points give us an estimate of how long work will take to do, and value points tell us how important it is that we do a particular task. And this is really important in Agile, because remember in Agile, we want to deliver value early. And so it's important in our project to actually have some measure of value as well as some measure of time because it's the combination of value and time that allows us to decide how to deliver value early. There is a difference between value points and story points. Story points are always estimated by the people who are going to do the work. So in a software project, story points are only ever estimated by the developers. No one else gets a say. But value points, because they're saying how worthwhile a particular uh, story is, are only ever estimated by a customer. So the customer estimates value points and the developers have no say in them, and the developers estimate story points and the customer has no say in them. Now if we want to put a value point score against each of our story cards, we do it in exactly the same way that we did with story points. The customer will find a story in the backlog that's a very low value story, one that they don't really care much about. 
And then they'll also find a second story that's a really, really important story. And they put these two stories on either end of a scale, and then proportionately between them, they'll move all of the other stories. That means that each of our stories now has two scores. It has a story point score, which says how long it's going to take to do the story, and it has a value point score, which is how important it is that that story is delivered. Now, the reason that we do estimation in Agile is primarily to work out what we're going to do next. Because remember, we're trying to deliver value early. So it's really important that when we're doing our next iteration, we have some way of gauging which stories we should do in that iteration, which ones we should do next. So what do we do? We've got these two scores. When we're choosing what to do next, do we choose the really short stories that we can do quickly and we can probably do more of them? Um, the problem there is that we might end up working on stories which don't really matter to the customer. Or do we go for the, the really high-valued stories? And the problem there is that the high-valued stories may take a lot longer to do, and we might find that we're giving ourselves far too much work that we can't deliver. One way around this is to introduce a third metric called the bang for the book score. Now, the bang for the book score is actually a way of measuring how to get the most value in the shortest time. And you calculate the bang for the book score by taking the value points and dividing it by the story points. And so the bang for the book is really a measure of the value per story point of each of the story cards. So you take your backlog and you list out all of the story points and all of the value points and then you work out the bang for the book for each one of the stories and then you order that story sequence going from the highest bang for the book score right the way down to the lowest bang for the book store. This gives you a rough sequence that you probably want to attack the stories in. But you'll probably find that some of your stories need to be done before others. Developers may have specific technical reasons why some stories need to be done first. Customers may have particular requirements whereby some stories need to be delivered much earlier than others. So the people doing the work and the people who are having the work done for them get together and they then can reorder this sequence to work out what the absolute sequence of stories should be. And they'll actually do this whole process of creating story points, creating value points, and working on the sequence at the end of every iteration. So although here it's going to look like we've got a single backlog that never moves, in reality, this calculation we've just been through will happen with every single iteration. But so far we've got no idea how long a story point is. So let's begin our first iteration. In our first iteration, we really have no clue as to how much work we can do. So we'll go back to the backlog and we'll begin to work from the, the top story down. And let's say, uh, for this example, in our first iteration, by the end of it, we've only finished the first story. Now, that first story had story points 55 and value points 89. And so at the end of the iteration, we add up all of the story points and all of the value points, and we say that our velocity is 55. The velocity is the number of story points on all of the cards you've managed to complete in that iteration, and it's a measure of the speed. Now, because we've completed the first iteration, and because we've done some real work, for the first time, we can make an estimate of how long the story point is. So if our iteration was, say, two weeks long, and our velocity is 55 story points, we know that a single story point is two weeks divided by 55. And that means if anybody asks the project manager how long each of the stories is going to take, we now have some way of doing that. We can calculate the duration in real time of a single story point, and we can work out how long each of the other story cards are going to take. The value is also important because that's a way of letting the customer know how much worthwhile work has been done during the iteration. So now that we know our velocity from the first iteration, we can use that to estimate which stories we'll be able to do for the second iteration. So if we go back to the backlog, we know we have a velocity of 55. And looking at the, the second and the third stories, we can see that added together, They've got values of 34 and 21 story points. Added together, they happen to give us 55. So we'll assume that in the second iteration, 
we were able to do two stories and that gave us a velocity of 55 and now a value of 199 and we'll continue in the same way with all of the other iterations. You'll see over time when you've got a lot of iterations that your velocity will remain fairly constant. You will be able to fine-tune it but it will stay during the main bulk of your project about the same level. The value however will drop off over time and that makes sense because remember that we're delivering value early. So we expect to, in our first few iterations, to deliver very high value and towards the end of the project we're going to start to deliver very low value. Now as the value drops off and as we start to run out of stories, you may get to a point like say iteration 5 in this example where the only stories left in total have a very very low value. Now in the same way that the development team have been using their velocity to work out what their, their story points are in real time, a customer can use the declining value to decide uh, whether it's worthwhile to continue with the project because early on, the first few iterations, they'll be getting a very high value for their fixed cost. They're paying a fixed amount of money for the people to work on each iteration. So over time, as the value points decline within each iteration, it means that each value point is becoming more expensive. And eventually, if you come to an iteration where the value points are very, very low, that will mean that each one of those value points is worth a lot of money to the customer. And they may decide that that becomes too expensive, and they can simply at that point end the project and declare it finished. 